Welcome to Victorious Life Christian Center. I am Pastor Che, and I'm excited to be here with you uh, another week, again, another day that we get to come together as the people of God to be able to worship Him in spirit and in truth, to be able to worship Him through the hearing of the Word, uh, to be edified, to be built up so that we can go out into the world on our jobs, wherever it is that we may go and touch people for the glory of God. I want you to understand today that your mission field is wherever God has put your feet. It is not necessarily in the church building, but we are the church. Amen. And so we are excited for the opportunity to come together again, as I said, so that we can grow and be equipped through the word of God with the weapons of warfare that we need, right? Because the weapons that we need are not carnal. We need the word, which is the sword. And we want to be able to love people through the word to help them to see Jesus Christ. That's really what it's about, right? It's not about me, but it's about all those that God has called us to serve and lead. Amen. So, Father God, we just thank you right now for who you are. I thank you for this opportunity to come before you and before your people, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Father God, those that are in this house today and those that are, you know, watching from the live stream. Father God, we ask that you would bless and touch each and every one of them. I pray, God, right now that you would help each person for this small moment in time to get rid of all distractions, all interruptions, everything that would keep them from hearing what it is that you're going to say. We know that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I've heard it said that if the devil can't make you bad, he will make you busy. And I pray right now that you will protect them and just give them this space and time to be able to receive, to take notes, to really take it in, not to just go through the motions but right now in this moment, God, we choose to grow. We choose to learn and to be fed and to not leave here the same way that we came, Father God. So I pray that you will open the eyes of people so they can see, open their ears so they can hear and open their hearts so they can receive. May I preach this message today with passion, purpose and power in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. You know what? I have to say that was a great prayer, prayer way to end that prayer because it said with power. And I talked about last week how I really love that word power. The message last week was called powerhouse. And, uh, you know, I'm going to I'm going to touch on some of those things just to give us somewhat of a review. But I got a I got a great message for you today. And. You know, this T-shirt that I have on, normally I don't preach in a T-shirt, but it goes along with my message. You know, this is a little TV show from my childhood, and, and it has something to do with the message today. So I say, you know what, I'm going to wear the T-shirt because I think it's fitting, right? But I love the word power. When I think of the word power, I can't even help but just put my fist together when I think about power. You know what I'm saying? Man, everything we need, we need to be plugged into a source of power, right? You go to start your car and you got gas in it and, and you know, you know, all the fuses and everything is working. When you crank that thing up, you, you want power. You, you want that thing to turn over, right? And if you go to turn that key and you're, you're like, oh man, something's wrong. Something's wrong with the power source. I know when your car won't start, the first thing we check is the battery. We're like, that's the simplest thing to, to look at. Like, is something wrong with my battery? Is it, is it dead? Are the cells drained? Is there corrosion on the, on the terminals? Something that I can just clear really, really quickly. You know, I've, I've seen it. I got a little thing, you know, because I tend to have a lot of old cars and I got this little thing for your battery that if corrosion builds up, you put it on there and you twist it and the brushes on there, the little metal brushes will get away all that battery acid and all of that. You put the terminal back on and boom, that thing cranked right up, right? So many people have experienced that before. My point is, is that in order for you to receive power, the pathway got to be clear. 
The pathway has to be clear, right? If you got a cord that's plugged into the source of power and that cord over time, people stepping on it and it gets broken down and the connectors in there end up breaking apart, you're going to turn that thing on one day and it ain't going to turn on. Something happened in the pathway to the power. All right. Um, so in giving you a review of last week of the message powerhouse, you know, last week we talked about how a house without power is just a shell. A house without power is just a shell. But in order to make a house a permanent residence, it must have power. We talked about how you could you could have a piece of land and build your dream home, the most beautiful home that you've ever wanted. Granite countertops, marble, tile, everything's the way you want it, just perfect, but no power yet. I mean, I don't think you're going to, you know, sign over and take possession of that thing from the contractors with no power. Because if you don't have power, you know what you're doing in that house? Camping. You just you just camping in a beautiful house with granite countertops. You know, you still got to go make a fire. You can't just turn your heat on. You can't turn the AC on. You may not have running water. You camping in a beautiful house. It could be 5,000 square foot campsite. No power, right? Um, man, I want to let you know, you know, when we think about that, you know, according to the word of God, if we look at us being a house, then in order for God to dwell in us, he needed to put the power in. He, need, he needed to build us properly, get, a, get rid of all the junk. You know, I talked about how when they get ready to build uh, an area, you know, build up some new homes, they got to clear that site. They got to cut down all the trees and get rid of all of the old stuff that was there. You know, that's how God does us. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he be a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. What is it? We have to be born again. Born again. How can we be born again? Obviously, we're not crawling back up in the womb. We're not doing that. Right. So what allows us to be born again is the spirit of God and the spirit of God is what gives us power. Jesus gave the disciples, you know, as I talked about last time, he, he told them about the promise. He told them what he was going to do, and then he gave them the command to go wait for it. Go wait. I'm leaving, but I'm not leaving without giving you something. So go wait for it. And so the disciples went. To wait for it, and we know we we know what happened in the day of Pentecost, which is the day of the Holy Ghost coming, and so the Holy Spirit comes suddenly. Suddenly, I like that. I like that word. Why? Because my last name is Sutton. You know, and my dad used to say, "All of a sudden, all of a sudden, right?" So the the disciples were were in that upper room, and they were waiting on the promise, and the Bible said that suddenly. The Holy Ghost came in like a rushing wind and tongues of fire came and fell on each person and they were filled with what? Power. Holy Ghost power. The ability to speak in different tongues because of the power of God. We need God's power. You know, there's, a, there's also another movie from my childhood it's called The Last Dragon. Now, this wasn't The Last Dragon of Bruce Lee, but this was The Last Dragon with Bruce Leroy. You know what I'm saying? And, and in that movie, Bruce Leroy had to, had to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with Shogun. You know what I'm saying? Shogun was the baddest round this town low down. Show sure enough. You know what I'm saying? And so there was an epic battle towards the end of the movie, you know, because because Shogun and his people, they was around there punking folks and just doing people wrong. And nobody would stand up to him until finally Bruce Leroy came. And, you know, Bruce Leroy, he was a quiet guy. He studied his martial arts. He did his little thing. But he was he was quiet, reserved, real meek. 
But you know, there comes a time where you got to stand up. You know, there comes a time when you got to face the bully. You can't run no more. And do you know that sometimes everybody is counting on you to be the one to face the bully? They all talking about, man, this guy, he's always doing people wrong, beating people up, coming into the restaurant, destroying it, taking the money, all of that. Somebody should do something. Man, I heard it said, if it's something that frustrates you, it's probably because you're the one who needs to do something about it. But they're looking for somebody to step up. You know that God has filled us with the Holy Ghost so we can step up. So we can stand up in the face of adversity and say, send me, God, I'll go. I'll face the bullies. I'll stand up for those that don't have a voice. I'm not afraid because I'm full of your power. And so Bruce Leroy, they're, they're in this epic battle. And, and, and Shogun, he, he's, he's beating Bruce Leroy down. Because he got this thing called the glow. And when you get in the zone and you get the glow, I mean, it was like when you had the glow, everything slowed. Like, I still remember how they did like Bruce Lee and his arms just looked like multiple arms. And Shogun had the glow and he was whooping on Bruce Leroy. And everybody was like his little brother and the girl. They were like, oh, oh, oh. And, and, and so Shogun had him and he, and he was dipping his head down in this barrel of water. And he was saying, who's the master? Man, come on. This is just like the devil. When he got you on the ropes and, and, and life seemed like it ain't going the way you want it to go. And, and you struggling and you asking God, why am I going through this? Instead of asking God, how can I grow through this? And so he's, he's whooping on him and he's, he pulls him out. You know, and my man, he got black hair. He got African-American hair, right? So that, that thing, that little afro done balled up. It's wet. And he's drenched. And he's like, who's the master? And he won't say it. And so Shogun puts him down there again. He does it a few times. And as he goes under the water and he's drowning, he begins to start having visions. And he sees himself and, and all of the things and all of the people that's counting on him. And he realizes in that moment who he is and what's inside of him. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, you got to realize who you are and what's inside of you. I got Holy Ghost power inside of me. And so he comes up this third time. And Shogun says, who's the master? And he smiles and he says, I am. Oh, man. And when he said, I am, he had the glow. And man, did he whoop Shogun's butt. I mean, he beat him down, right? And so I, I use that little analogy because I want you to understand that you don't need to be beat down to oblivion before you recognize who you are and what's inside of you. All we need to do is go to the word of God and receive what the word says. And take that as the truth. And today I want to help you understand the truth about God's word and his power that resides inside of us because he built us to be powerhouses. And so the last thing we talked about last week was the dunamis power, which is which is the Greek word for power. Right. Which is the dynamic, explosive, unmatched power of God. It's a power like no other. Unmatched. God is unmatched. God is never worried. God is never out of control. God is never confused. Uh, God is never uncomfortable. God is always in control of the situation. So if God dwells on the inside of us, if his dynamic, explosive, unmatched power is in us, then we need to walk in the character traits of our father. And so that was last week, Powerhouse. I think we had a good time last week. And so we're going to move forward today. Um, I got some good stuff for you today part two of this message is called i have the power 
Last week, we talked about being built the kind of house that we were. God had to build the kind of house to prepare us for what he had to fill us with. Right. When you purchase a house. You don't just want to put any old furniture in there. You don't just throw anything up in your house. You know, I mean, if you build a new house, you're not driving around. I mean, at least from my perspective, you know, I build a house even with my house. Now, I wasn't just walking around looking for places where people just put stuff on the curb and put that little sign that says free on it. I wasn't filling my house with all that corner free stuff. Right. You want to you you make sure that you pick out the things that you want in your house, especially if you design and build your house. You know, I have an aunt down in Atlanta or down in Georgia, and she she walked us through her house and she got to pick out everything. Every appliance, all, all the flooring, the carpet, everything she picked it. Why? Because she wanted to make sure it was the way that she wanted it to be. That's how God is. He's an intricate God. He cares about the small details. The smallest, the minute things God cares. One of the things that I think we don't really consider or recognize to be a power is that we have the power to communicate directly with God through his spirit. I think that's a tremendous power. I mean, we're talking about the creator of the universe the creator of life that I don't have to have a prophet go before God. I don't, I don't have to make a, a, a lamb sacrifice, but I can wake up in the morning as I talked about last week. And before my feet hit the floor, I say, good morning, God. And he hears me say, good morning. And I can begin to talk to him and worship him and thank him for the day and, and what's getting ready uh, to take place. Uh, but the point is, we have a great power because we could communicate directly with God and him with us. And so the Bible says in Romans chapter eight, verses 26 and 27, Romans eight, 26 and 27. It says in the same way, the spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans and he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God so what is one of the reasons why God had to place his spirit inside of us had to prepare us to receive his spirit is so that we could communicate with him even in ways that we don't understand how good is God that we could begin to speak in our heavenly language. Matter of fact, th listen, sometimes you face situations and circumstances in life that can rock you so hard. You don't even know words to say. It just might be tears. It just might be like, oh. and God knew what that meant. I know I've had some moments like that where I didn't I didn't have words. All I all I had was a bundle of emotions that I didn't know how to express and, and, and tears begin to flow. But God knew what I was saying through my tears. Wow, that's a good God. That's a good God. You know, so I think one of the ways that we that uh, that connects us to the power source is communication. So I, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to help you, saints. If you have a life that is lacking in prayer, that is lacking in reading the word, that is lacking of being around other like minded believers, I want to let you know you're going to be lacking in power. You're going to be lacking in power. I have the power. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, I have the power. Come on, you got to say it like you mean it. Say, I have the power. Amen. Amen. I'm going to show you why you have power today. Uh, today, more than anything, I want to really break down the responsibility of power. There's a great responsibility that comes with power. Because there are a lot of people today that have positions of power. 
and they abuse those things. And we have a responsibility as children of God to take the power that he's given us and not wield it for our own use. In talking about having the power and, and being a powerhouse, you know, one of the ways that I thought about explaining this to you so that you could understand the responsibility, I think of having power like being a lighthouse. Now, if you know anything about lighthouses, as I studied lighthouses, a lighthouse has two main purposes. Number one purpose of a lighthouse is to be a navigational aid. So that those that are out there on the sea, because you you could be so far away in the sea that you can't see nothing. Does that make sense? No pun intended. But you could be so far from everything that all you can see is the horizon. You can't see no land or nothing like that. Right. So lighthouses are very important to navigate people, especially those on the sea. Right. Um, what I also found out about lighthouses in order to help navigate lighthouses are painted according to their background to allow them to stand out. So if a background is a very dark background, the lighthouse will be painted white because it will stand out against the dark background. If the background is very white or bright, you know, like glaciers and snow and all of that, the lighthouse will have red strips painted around it so that it can stand out from the, the, the white background, right? Oh man, God is good. Last time I checked, the Bible said we're supposed to be a peculiar people. We're supposed to stand out. You know, when, when everything's going wrong, we should be able to be calm in the middle of the storm because we know who we're connected to. There should be some signs painted on us. I'm not talking about verbally, but there should be some things about your life that when people are going through storms, they seek you out. They need the lighthouse. It's a responsibility that comes with that. When those people come to you, will you be ready? Will you have the word? Will you be prepared for that divine appointment? Because in times of brokenness, in times of confusion, in times of despair, sometimes those situations are needed in order to open up the door to the person's heart. And God is wanting to use you to speak his love right on in. Sometimes it takes drastic measures for drastic change. I, I don't pray for hard things for people, but I do pray whatever it takes to make them realize they need Jesus Christ. I have the power. Secondly, a lighthouse is to warn boats of, of dangerous areas, right? So, so if we are to compare ourselves to the lighthouse, Right. Because if the, if a boat gets too close to the shore, the rocky areas, it could it could get messed up. So the lighthouse is a symbol that lets it know how close it is to the shores. We are to warn others of the dangers and the pitfalls of wrong living. Not just with words, but with the light of our life. You know, one of the things I pray when I'm in the gym is I say, God, obviously I'm not going to get the opportunity to talk to everybody in this gym today. But what I do ask of you today is that my life without words will speak volumes about who you are. May they see the way I help somebody or the way I encourage the people that I'm working out with. May, may they see that and see you. Do you know that, that people can see God through your kindness, through your love, and I want you to understand that if you claim to be a Christian, somebody's watching you. God has given you influence in some arena of life. You are not insignificant. Not by the least. Somebody's watching how you mother, how you father, how you are a brother, how you are a friend, how you serve, your attitude in hard times. They're looking to see, can you be consistent? Nobody wants to link up with up and down folks. I know I don't. I need people that could just, man, I know it's hard right now, but God, you got it. I don't got time to be down. People are counting on me. Now, I'm not talking about not being human and not having emotions, right? But I cast my cares 
upon the Lord. For his yoke is easy. His burden is light. And as I give those things to him, this is daily. I got I to gotta give all my anxieties, all my doubts, all my worries, all my fears, all my hopes, all my dreams, all my aspirations. I got to give that to him daily so that I can walk and truly receive the fact that my steps are ordered. I'm right where I need to be right now. So many times, you know, worry comes into people's lives because they're thinking so far ahead. They're trying to figure everything out. And I want you to understand you're not going to be able to figure it all out. I'm not saying you can't have plans, but the Bible says many are the plans of a man's heart. But it's the Lord's purpose that will prevail. So if I give God everything that I have and I trust that my steps are ordered, that he's going to have me walk in purpose, I can rest. I don't have to know it all. There's great peace in not having to know it all. There's great peace in really trusting that God has it. You know, I was talking to my wife the other day on a drive. You know, the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will grant you the desires of your heart. And I think so many people fall in love with grant me the desires of my heart. And they don't really focus on delight yourself in the Lord. And so they'll they'll people will justify whatever we want. Right. And so we'll say, well, man, I love God and and I read the Bible. And so, man, God's going to give me what I want. No, it don't work that way. You may get it over time. But see, God cares more about what happens in you than what you have to go through. If he just gave you everything you wanted, you wouldn't grow into who he needs you to be. You would treat God like a genie. Man, I need that new car. Man, give me that promotion at that job. I need a raise, right? But God needs to grow you. And growth only comes through getting out of your comfort zone. Growth only comes in the stretch times of life. And so when you get what God has for you, it doesn't have you. There's a lot of people that have a lot of things, but, but it has them. And so when something happens, their whole life falls apart. But when you know who the source is and who gave it to you, you could be like, it's all good. Job had to go through that. He lost everything. But he knew who the source of power was. He knew how he had all the things he had. I have the power. First Peter 2 9. I like what the Amplified version says. It said, but you are a chosen race. A royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a special people for God's own possession. So that you may proclaim the excellencies, the wonderful deeds and virtues and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Man, you got the glow. You get God, you, you let God's power come on in you, and you got the glow. You like Bruce Leroy. You got it. And once you got it, you can do all things through Christ who give you strength. Philippians 4.13, you can do it. You're the one. I have the power. Matthew 5.14 you know, when looking at being a lighthouse, it says, Matthew 5, 14 and 16 through 16, it says, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. Anybody by a show of hands ever had a light bulb go out in your house? Man, I know I have. If it's going to happen, right? Man, and sometimes you have a lot of light bulbs go out. It seems like when one go out, like, wow, well, these, man, they just, they like, they linked up. They was like, hey, let's go out. Let's just go out. And ain't nothing worse then when light bulbs start to go out in areas that you really need light and you ain't got no light bulbs. Man, you got to struggle through that, right? So you got to go get some light bulbs 
and you plug that thing in and you turning it when you first start turning it it ain't it ain't connecting yet it ain't it won't come on you got to turn it just enough time still boop that thing is like woof lights back lights back see some people when they get far away from God the light begins to go out getting disconnected from the source I believe it's called a filament. Is that what it is inside of a light bulb? Sometimes the little, when that little filament break, that light bulb done. You need a new one, right? Now, the beautiful thing about being in Christ is we're made new daily. It's a fresh anointing for you daily. Maybe yesterday your light bulb went out, but I want you to understand that today, this is the day. That the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I can get plugged back in today. Don't let the enemy fool you and make you think that whatever mistakes you made in your past or whatever issues you have going on and you feel like your light's going out. This is a new day. You got to receive his grace and mercy for the new day. Each day. You know, one of me and my wife's models right now as we are just pushing and pressing towards our goals and dreams is we're living life one day at a time. Do I have two year goals and five year goals and 10 year goals? Yeah, I do. But I'm I'm living life one day at a time. I know that if I walk in victory, if I win the day, that the outcome of winning the day every day over and over again will equate to the two year goal. Will equate to the five year goal. Will equate to the 10 year goal. Will equate to a lifetime of living for the Lord in a way that when we get to glory, he says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Why? Because I was just living for the day. God, who do you want me to speak to? to I'm looking for it. God, who are you going to send to me today? I'm asking you. I'm like, I'm looking for who's been bullied, God. Let me go encourage them. Let me go love on them. Let me walk with them. I'm willing to get into their life. Man, I think as, as Christians more than anything, we got to be willing. See, Jesus spent time three years with, with 12, you know, his main disciples. And in three years, he put so much in them that it transformed the world forever. Who are we walking with that should we leave? They say, man. If it had not been, I got some people like that in my life. I got some people, you know, man, one of my friends, Cornelius Bonner, we called him Cornbread. I talked about him before when I was playing professional football. Man, he stepped into my life. Asked me to come read the Bible. He was a light. I could tell he was different. The coach wanted us to pair up and study film. He was like, Sutton, you're with me. He just called me out. He didn't even know me. But see, the spirit can give you discernment. He called me out and we begin to watch film together. And then he was like, hey, Sutton, do you read the Bible? I was like, yeah. He's like, you want to come read the Bible with me tomorrow? I was like, yeah. He was like, 5 a.m. I was like, oh, 5 a.m. I was like, dang, bread, you. But, I, but there was something about him that I, I didn't want to let him down. I wanted to show up. Oh, my God. Listen. If you want what God has for you, you got to show up. You got to show up. If your power go out, man, the phone, the, the power company ain't calling you. You better call them and be like, I need y'all to come through. Something ain't right. When you become a powerhouse, like the lighthouse, people can count on you because God is counting on you. I hope that's the responsibility of having power. I want you to understand that not only are people counting on you, but God himself is counting on you. That's why he sent he sent his own son down here in the form of a man because he knew he could count on himself to get across the message that needed to be given. And he took that message and he put it in our heart now. And so now he's counting on you to be like Jesus. 
so that you can bring the message to those that he will send you to. He said, go and make disciples of all nations. Man, on your job, it's some, it's some people that I, I might not ever know them. I might not ever have a conversation with them. But there's some people there that trust the God in you, the light in you. And God is counting on you. For when that, that opportunity comes, be ready. This is why you study the word and read the word. You want to have something for people. It would be like me coming here today and I just, I didn't put, I didn't put in no time. No study time. I just was like, I'm a wing it. Man, I thank God I don't serve a winging it, God. But that he, he makes plans. The Bible says, surely there is a future and a hope for you and it will not be cut off. He told Jeremiah, for I know the plans. I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. God didn't wing it. So I don't want to wing it. I don't want to just float on through life. How many people are just floating through? Just going through the day-to-day -day motions of life. They do the same thing over and over again, only focused on what they need to do, never thinking about how to bless the lives of other people. That's a very small life. But I'm a powerhouse. I'm, I'm full of power. I, I don't got time to live small. God is big time, so I'm big time. Right? You got to be able to speak. That's, that's not cocky. That's confidence. Confidence in God. Cockiness has to put people down in order to feel good. I'm confident enough in the God in me that I can tell you how great you are because I know how great I am. That's confidence. Now, let me get into this little story real quick about this T-shirt. So when I was a boy, this TV show, He-Man, it's one of my favorite shows. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, I got the DVD series. I'm a grown man. I got it, right? Because you, we all got those things when we was kids that it just take you back, you know, to that moment when you didn't have a care in the world. And He-Man, He-Man's yoked. You know what I'm saying? But, but He-Man was Prince Adam, though. He, he wasn't He-Man at all times, okay? And He-Man had a responsibility that when things were going crazy in the land, because he had some tremendous adversaries, Skeletor, the Sorceress, Man-at-Arms, you know what I'm saying? It was all these, these crazy trap jaw. I, I know these folks, you know what I'm saying? Hey, and, and so they was always plotting and scheming on how to, how to do some dirt, how to harm the people, how to take over. And so He-Man, when everything would go down, he would grab his sword and he would say, by the power of Grayskull, I have the power. And when he would say that, the light of Grayskull would just, boom, just fall on him. And, and it would come through the sword, and He-Man would just yoke out. And then, and then he would point the sword at Battle Cat, his cat, and Battle Cat. You see Battle Cat? Where he at? Right here. And, and Cringer became Battle Cat. Cringer was, Cringer was afraid. Cringer was like, I don't want to do it, Adam. I just want to sleep. That's how that's how Cringer was. But 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 uh Adam Prince Adam would be like, we gotta do it. We gotta do it, Cringer. And he was like, okay. And he would he would get it. He would point it when the power came, and Cringer became the mighty battle cat. And man, Cringer was he was a beast, a real beast, right? And so what I want you to understand is that just like Prince Adam had the sword and he could call on the power of grace call, I want you to know as men and women of God that we don't need no grace call, we don't need no crystal ball, we don't need no wrecking ball, but all we need is the blood of Jesus. All we need is Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God rose him from the dead, you will be saved. That's what you need to be filled with the power. 
Because He-Man was just a TV show. I could say by the power of grace call all I wanted and what nothing happened into me. And that's how so many people are. They looking at TV shows and they trying to imitate people's lives and they looking at Instagram and Facebook and people living these fake lives, making you think they have more than they have when they written Lamborghinis and written yachts, all of those things so they can get hits and make you feel less than what you are because you don't know the power that's in you. But when you recognize who you are and whose you are, I'm not looking to be um, built up by fake friends. I'm not looking for my self image to determine what my self image is, whether or not people like me on some social media app. Because at the end of the day, when the storms of life come, they ain't going to be there. They're not rolling up to the Lamborghini to your house to see how you're doing. See, they haven't stepped into your life. You need some people that are really in your life because we are going to go through some things. And sometimes you need people to plug you back in. Sometimes you need people to remind you of what you have. We always looking for something new. And a lot of times we don't even recognize we already got what we need. We always want the new thing, but you got it, though. You have the thing. You got the Holy Ghost. You're full of power. Romans 15, 13. It says, may the God of hope. Fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. So that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow. May he fill you with all joy and all peace as you trust in him. So that you may overflow with hope by the power of of the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to put our hope in God. It is a promise. It is a guarantee. It is it, the Holy Spirit. Like look, the Holy Spirit is so real and so good that when I'm going through things and not even when I'm going through things, I'm going to tell you something. D due to all this COVID stuff, I've been working from home since all of it went down. And so there's a lot of times where I'm alone. But I'm never lonely. I'm alone in my house, but I'm not lonely because because God is with me. And I think there are a lot of people that they treat God like a garment, like I, I'm going to put him on because I'm going to church. I'm going to put him on when I got to say something about God or to look a certain way for a certain group of people. But when I get home, I take it off and hang it up. But I'm telling you that when you really get plugged into God, my power source don't turn off. It's, it's just regenerative. It's just over and over and over again. When I, when I read God's word, he's always speaking to me. Pastor Gail says God is always speaking, but who's listening? God wants you to know his will. Ephesians 3.20 says this. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. The reason why God would do exceedingly and abundantly is because he is in us. Do you know that it benefits God for you to be blessed? It benefits God for people to act like, man, why you, why is this happening in your life? Why, man, why are you so blessed? Man, because God is good in my life. And I'm going to tell you something. In order to understand what good is, you got to go through some bad stuff sometimes. I know God is good because I know what he brought me through. If everything in your life went, went perfect, you couldn't relate to people. Jesus had to go through some hard stuff. 
Last time I checked, he was spit on, beaten, ridiculed, judged wrongly. His friends turned their back on him. Man, he was hurt. But he still did it for me and you. What got him through that? Man, the power. The power and the promise. There's power in the promise. Your body was built as a household for God. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20 says this. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20 in the NIV says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Man. Who is in you. Whom you have received from God. Check this out. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. I, I really love that passage of scripture. Because there's something freeing when, when you realize that I'm not the boss of me. I'm not. I have a master. He man and the masters of the universe, right? But I have the master and he governs my life. The Bible isn't this, you know, these rules and these regulations to beat me down. It's, it's to help me have a great life. Why would, why would God have Paul say all things are permissible, but not all things are beneficial? Why would he, why would he say that? You could do anything, but I want to let you know not everything's going to be good for you. So I want you to think about how those things relate to how I would want you to live so that you can live according to my word. Pleasing unto me. Thinking first and foremost is what I'm going to do. Is that going to please God first? I don't want to please man. Now, man could be a secondary benefit of it. But if it's not pleasing to God, but it pleases people, I'm out of bounds. And I think it's very easy to do that because we like to feel like, you know, we, we please people. We like to help people, but I want to please God first. So everything that's good does not mean it's good for you. That's why we can't copycat somebody's life because what's good for you might not be good for me. But God knows what's good for me. I've said this many years ago, but but our God believes in ROI. ROI is return on investment. God believes in that. Okay. I want you to understand that God did not send his son to die so you could just live any old way. That scripture is telling you he bought you back to himself. When you have the power, you operate differently. I. I think about, I told you when I think about power, for some reason, my fists always come together when I think, I don't know, maybe because I think about like, like a power punch, you know what I'm saying? And so when I think about like professional boxers, you know, if any of you know about boxing, you understand that when a boxer becomes a, a legal professional boxer, that their hands are considered lethal weapons. So real boxers, like, just think about this. There are boxers, I'll, I'll take Floyd Mayweather, and he's a little guy, but that little guy could do damage to you because he's a real professional at what he, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like he has the glow and you don't when it comes to boxing. Like, you could throw a punch, he could see that thing from a mile away. He's like, ah, oh, yeah, no. But hit, bop, hit you, you like, oh, I didn't even see that coming because he's a professional. He got the glow at that, but my point is, why would somebody who's a professional boxer have security around them? Because there's going to be people that try to try him. They want to test him. They want to, you know, cats on the street. They want to see, like, let me see what you really about. So he has to have people around him because he cannot use the power that way. If he uses the power that he has on the street, he could go to jail. He's going to be sued. He could lose his license to fight. So he got to have people around him because if somebody's acting up, he can send them big, hey, man, handle that for me. I can't do it. 
They ain't professionals. So they usually have some big Debo cats and they just grab them up like, get out of here. Because if he put hands on you, it's going to be bad, right? So we have to understand that because we have power, we got to operate differently in God. That's not for our own purposes. There are a lot of people that use the gospel the wrong way. And I'm not going to get into all of the ways people do things wrong. You know what I'm saying? I, it's a lot of hoaxes out there. I'm going to just tell you that. But all I want you to know is I'm not saying you can't go to a prayer meeting and be healed. I'm not saying that somebody can't touch you with a handkerchief if that's what God told them to do and you'll be healed. But for the most part, I want you to understand that you're not getting a hanky in the mail that's going to change your life. You're not getting some blessed oil that somebody sent you from Indonesia that's going to change your I want you to understand that you don't need gimmicks. You're connected to the source of power. God ain't in the oil. He didn't put his spirit. Look, man, I know we pray over this stuff. And it's a symbol. But God is not chilling in that oil. God is in me. God is in you. The power is in you. Romans 12, 1 says this. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. I want to read that from the Amplified. I really liked it. It said, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all of your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent, service and spiritual worship wow the power is for god's purposes that's the whole point of being filled with god's power is to allow him to use you the way that he needs for you to be for him to be glorified i want to end with this god's gift to us is eternal life we didn't earn it we didn't do anything to get it. All we had to do was receive it, right? But our gift to God is the use of our life. That's what we could give back to him. When somebody's a great giver, we always struggle with how can I, what can I do for them? Like they got everything. How can I, you know, it's like God got everything. What can I do for God? Give him yourself. That's all he ever wanted. And walk in obedience because that's greater than sacrifice. As a parent, if I told my son, wash the dishes and I came home and he cut the grass, he washed the car, he vacuumed, cleaned the windows, but he didn't do the dishes. I'm like, bro, you didn't do what I asked you to do, but I did all that. Listen, man, obedience is greater than sacrifice. I didn't ask you to do that. Just do what God asked you to do. And lastly, I'll say this. It's a quote from somebody that, you know, recently passed away, a, a great, inspiring man. He said this. He said, the best use of your life is to use your life so that the use of your life outlives your life. I'll say that one more time. The best use of your life is to use your life so that the use of your life outlives lives your life man if Jesus Christ didn't live that we're here right now because he used his life and it outlived him on this earth he, he lives but he's not on this earth except through us and so we want to live lives that when it's time for us to move on and transition to glory that they say man I'm so thankful brother Jeff was here Man, he blessed my life. I'm so thankful Cornbread was here 
and he, and he poured into my life. I'm so thankful that Pastor Nate was here because he poured into my life. And now I have the power. Father God, we thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus for allowing us to come together today again and to be able to receive your word, Father God, to understand the purposes behind having your power, behind being filled with the Holy Ghost, Father God, so we can be used to be your voice and your hands on this earth, Father God. I pray that the people that were that are here and the people that were watching today, that, that whatever you spoke through me, Father God, that it ministered to their need. I thank you that you have the ability to speak to every concern. <laughs> we all have different ones, but the same word can touch each person the way they need it to be touched, God, because you're a powerhouse. And I thank you to be connected to you. May we continue to stay plugged into you daily, God, so we can be renewed and refreshed and be able to attack the day for your namesake. We love you. We appreciate you. And we want everything for the rest of this day to bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.